Hello everybody. Um, this is Misty, of course. Um, I'm gonna do a little small story time. Um, and since I didn't do Marie's cake, uh, because it was a disaster, uh, we're gonna do a story time dedicated to my son Marie's, uh, aka to Two Tizzle, uh, to Woo all of all his many glorious nicknames but um we're gonna i'm gonna talk about when how when maurice was born uh it was quite crazy and um yeah it was a adventure so stay tuned pretty much like 21 20 21 weeks um and I was at home and it's like I feel like I'm peeing on myself or whatever so I went to talk to my sister I was like I don't know I feel like something leaking and so she's like go to the hospital and get checked out because before Marie's uh figured few years um, before him um, I had a miscarriage at 16 weeks and my water bag bust 16 weeks so um, yeah so we figured the same thing was about to happen with him um, I was like 21 weeks I think and went to the hospital they wanted to see was it uh, urine or was it my uh, amniotic fluid and it was so first doctor came and told me like hey you about to have a miscarriage um, again so I just start bawling crying or whatever um, another doctor came in and checked the heartbeat and Maurice was just alive and kicking like his heart was just pumping like he was amped up and the doctor's like, uh, this little buddy is, is, is trying to survive. So we're going to see what we can do to, um, to prolong this pregnancy. Um, so he came back and was like, hey, you're going to have to be on bed rest for the rest of your pregnancy. I was like, okay. So he was like, but you have to be in the hospital for the rest of your pregnancy. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, for um, now, you won't be able to walk. You can't go to the restroom. You can't go to the bathroom. You can't take a bath. You can't stand for the rest of your pregnancy. I was like, okay. The way my bed is positioned is that it's on an angle, and this is my head. So I had to take the pressure off of my cervix. So I'm like, I, this is the way I have to eat and sleep and poop and pee <laughs> everything in the hospital bed this I can I cannot move so I this is the angle that I was at to get the pressure off of my cervix so the uh, my water bag won't bust it was bulging so so this goes on for like two weeks it's like I'm I'm like five months so Babies are born at nine months, so yeah, pretty. My due date was December, uh, Christmas Eve was my due date. Due date was uh, December the 24th, 2005. So, yeah, this mid August, pretty long ways to go. <laughs> then, just watching the news, hey, hurricane is coming. It's like, okay, we lived in New Orleans all our life. You know, hurricane came, or they say hurricane coming. Nothing really major happened, but um, yeah, this hurricane was 
kind of big. Well, it was big. It was Hurricane Katrina. I'm stuck like in the hospital. We have no communication. So we're like, what's going on? Like, because we were uptown and the area that we was at was completely dry. Like, it was no flooding, no nothing. It was completely dry. They called the helicopters. My nurse came in. My nurse came in and told me that, uh, hey, you're, you're, you're on the list, the transport list to get out of here. As soon as they get everybody with the pacemakers and the, the people that really, really need to get out of the hospital first, you're, you're first after that. It's like, okay, cool. So, the helicopters never came. So, this is like day, day four. And... They never came to pick up the other people, so my uh, doctor and two nurses decided upon themselves to take their car, and one uh, one of the nurses had like a suburban, a big sur suburban, so uh, decided to take their car and bring us to their nearest hospital. Um, they told my child's father, like, there's no room for you. That it could have been wrong from him, but there was just like it's no room. You don't stay too far, you know. You can go home, but I don't think they know the extent of the hurricane. So he left. I didn't want to go. He was like, just don't be selfish. Do it for the baby, you know. I'll find you. It's like I don't want to go. I'm going somewhere by myself. Like. I don't know where they're taking me. Like, you don't know where they're taking me. They don't know where they're taking me. They're just going to take me to the nearest hospital. How are you going to find me? How are anybody going to find me? I don't know. Ah! So, um, get to Baton Rouge. They rushed us in. When we got to the hospital, they brought us to the first hospital. Like they said, they didn't have a women's center at that hospital. So, we was looking like, what? So we got in the ambulance and we had to be transported. Oh my God, and this and that. I mean, they was treating us so nice. We was like, oh, they're so nice here. And me and the other girl, I don't I don't remember her name. It was just like, oh, they're so nice here. And blah, blah, blah. So the next day, it was kind of hard for them to position me because they had my chart, but they didn't know how I was positioned at Turo. So I kept on telling them that they had me like this and finally like maybe like three days later a specialist came in and he understood what I was saying and finally they, they positioned me right but the two days I was there I was just laid flat so it was still pressure on my cervix and my dad was the first person I talked to and he was just so just so nonchalant or whatever he was like hey baby how you doing i was like hey papa like the tears were just flowing it's like hey papa and he was like oh hi you you okay i was like yeah i was just so happy that um that they made it um <laughs> and he was like he was just talking to me like uh he was just talking to me like it was a uh, normal conversation so um I asked him, did everybody make it out? And he was like, yeah, everybody's here. So, um, social worker got, um, my cousin back on the phone and gave, gave my, um, uh, gave my cousin all the information and for her to give to my sisters and brothers, the rest of my family members so they can call to know that I'm okay. So, um, like they called and everything. I think the most, uh, The most um, emotional phone call was my niece Dee Dee. Like <laughs> I'm about to cry now. Um, like she just called and she was just crying. She was like, "I was just so scared and I was just so worried about you." And I was just like, "I'm just so scared and I'm so worried about you." And um, we were just crying on the phone, like. That was probably the most emotional call I ever had. <sighs> Me and my child's father, uh, I'm pretty much very stubborn. I didn't understand what was going on. So he he was there and he asked me, I asked him 
well, I got my tray, my lunch tray, and I told him the when the lady came, she pulled my tray on the side, and I had a crossword puzzle. And I asked, and I asked him, can he say, hey, can you just scoot over the tray so I can get my crossword puzzle? And it was like a sofa on the side of my bed, and as he was laying on, he was like taking, trying to take a nap, or why she be trying to take a nap? And he was like, I'm tired. I was like, dude, you can't just like, just push the tray over here just a little bit so I can get my crossword puzzle. Like, I'm bored. Like, I really want to do my crossword puzzle. I'm like, I'm not asking you to go to the store or anything. I just want you to push the tray over a little bit so I can get my crossword puzzle. And he was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm tired. You don't know what I've been going through and this and that. And I was like, fine. You don't have to give me my tray. So I turned over and I reached for my tray. And when I turned back, it's like, Phew. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> he was like, uh-oh, what? I was like, um, yeah. I think my water bus, and I had this done before. I think my water bus. So the nurses, they were kind of upset that our, I couldn't do anything. So every time I pressed the button, they had to come. And <laughs> so every time I press the button, this one nurse, I, I know she was happy when her shift was over and she just had an attitude. So she, I was like, she's like, yes. I was like, um, I'm sorry for bothering you, but I think my water bus. She was like, excuse me? I said, I think my water. And before I can say bust again, like so many nurses was up in the room. Um, they came, they checked, and they it's like, yep, her water bus. So I was 24 weeks and five days, and yeah, not at all ready to give birth. So they checked, did the ultrasound. He was still breached. Um, it was like, oh my goodness. So they checked his feet were were coming out. His feet was like in the vaginal area. He was trying to come out. So they had to do an emergency C-section because he was coming out, breached. Like, and there was, like, when they put their hand to feel, they can feel his feet. His feet was, like, hanging, like, hanging in the vagina area. So I had to do an emergency C-section, and I couldn't sit up because if I sit up, I will break his legs. I, yeah, so... I didn't sit up to get the uh, medicine in my spine and it wasn't an epidural um, general anesthesia I think whatever they give you I couldn't sit up so I had to lay down and curl up with the pillow and get the medicine this was their first time ever doing that as well so they were nervous and I was nervous so I was like, this big huge needle is about to go in my back. And they never did something like this with a person laying down. So they, yeah, this is kind of quite scary. So the medicine, medicine finally kicked in and was laid down with these machines. The medicine kicked in. It felt so good. I didn't know they were cutting me. And it felt awesome. And it was like, you you know what you're having? I'm like, yeah, it's a boy. I know that much. And um, so... He was born. He was like, oh my God, it's the boy. He was born at two. Oh. You know, and then I, I had Maurice and Maurice, I didn't even get a chance to see Maurice. They took him straight to NICU. I just know that he peed on the doctors when he came out and um, he was born one pound, 13 ounces. And he was 12 and a half inches long. And I didn't get a chance to see him. Usually they would have let me, but they took him straight out the room, cleaned him up straight to NICU. I didn't get a chance to see him right after he was born. Um, by me having a C-section, I couldn't, it's like a major surgery, so I couldn't go to where he was at because I couldn't, I couldn't leave the hospital floor because that's considered like a major surgery so I didn't see my child until like two days later 
and um finally got the chance to see uh baby boy king because he didn't have a name because we didn't uh we didn't have time to think of a name and because as soon as we found out it was a boy like a week later we was like decided on names so we didn't haven't decided on a name yet and he was he was fighting for his life every day um he only had one surgery and that was with his eyes because his eyes didn't fully develop and that's why he wore glasses now today and um that's about the only thing that he uh, has surgery on. I'll put some pictures and show you how he was in the hospital, how he looked in the hospital, and I don't think I have no pictures. I have a pictures when he, the second day of when he came home or whatever, but I'll show you those pictures as well. And um, some pictures of how small he was tiny he was in the hospital as well and um but that was the story of how my little pumpkin Maurice Michael King was born God has a purpose for him like you know I don't know too many babies that may still be alive and have no physical health problem besides wearing glasses and I don't consider that as physical I wear glasses um that don't have no physical health problem physical and was born at 24 weeks and five days and not only he has autism and he has ADHD but he's doing good Hope you guys like story time with me, Miss T. And I hope that you uh, comment um, and thumbs up, like the video. Like the video. Till next time, um, peace, love.